And your pinup choice, the number one voice, Lena Horne. All this and heavy too, because here he is, your master of ceremonies, our number one hoist up boy, Ernie Bubbles Whitman. Thank you. This is your big fat CQ with a barrack full of bounce that's calculated to carve his initials on all your hepatagios. So latch on to your trilly parachutes and get ready to straighten up, because we're really going to fly right. And now I can keep the manipulation of my massive molars down to a minimum, because I don't take any fancy phrases to present to you the most famous favorite filly of the armed forces, Lucius Lena Horn. Hello, Lena, darling. You're looking mighty sharp tonight. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Ernie. You're looking kind of sharp, too. <laughs> in a round sort of way. Now, well, Lena, you know I don't like those ribs about my fat, you know. I know, Ernie, but you sure got a lot of fat around your ribs. I give up, Lena. Let's forget about the great, big, beautiful me and concentrate on that great, big bundle of meal you got to answer. Ain't no upper. <laughs> Oh, Lena, I'm afraid you got to help me out again. I promised a certain party that you'd give her some advice on a certain subject. Here she is, Butterfly McQueen! Hello there, Butterfly. What seems to be the trouble this time? Same thing, Miss Hahn. You mean men? Yes, the obstinate sex. Oh, Butterfly, you mean the opposite sex, don't you? They sure are. Whenever I come from one direction, they go in the opposite. See, Miss Hahn, I wish I could be like you. Whenever I see you, you've got a man on each arm. Maybe so, Butterfly. But for every man I have on my arm, you've got ten on your mind. There must be some way to get men off your mind completely. Oh, don't say that. I'm too young to die. <laughs> the answer to my fondest dreams. He's a PFC named Benny. Really? What's he like? Neat, natty, and nearsighted. As soon as I saw him, I gave him that real G.I. look. G.I.? Yes. Give in, brother. Give in. <laughs> well, did he, Butterfly? Not right away, but he did take me for a moonlight ride in his car. We drove out to a lonely spot. The car stopped and he said he was out of gas. Well, what happened? Nothing, he was out of gas. <laughs> but Butterfly, listen, how long did you stay out there? Not very long. In about ten minutes, then he looked at me and told me to puck her up. Oh, to kiss him? No, to siphon a tank. <laughs> oh, gee, he doesn't sound very romantic, Butterfly. Oh, he is. Two weeks ago, he sent me his wings. Oh, he's in the air corps. No. Last week, he sent me the rest of the turkey. <laughs> well, where is he stationed, Butterfly? He's in a motor pool. Gee, I wish he'd put the clutch on me sometime. <laughs> you know, Miss Hart, he's just my type. Your type? Yes, yeah, single. And <laughs> he's so soft-hearted. When he sent me that turkey last week, he almost cried. Oh, why? Well, it seems there's a turkey farm right next door his door to his camp, and this poor little hen died because she was over-patriotic. Over-patriotic? Yes. The camp band was playing the Star Spangled Banner, and she tried to lay an egg while standing at attention. <laughs> hey, thank you, Butterfly McQueen, and I know that someday you'll get your man... On a reasonably accurate facsimile. <laughs> <laughs>